All right, it's episode two of our coastal Maine road trip. And we're showing you 48 hours in Old Orchard Beach in Portland. A beautiful city by the sea. This town has burned to the ground four separate times in its history. Oh, wow. That was wow. amazing. I was laying on the back. Now it's a keeper. Woo! Right. I feel like a professional now. These are our lobsters. On our last episode, we kicked off our coastal road trip through Maine with a stop in the beautiful seaside town of Kennebunkport. After devouring the best lobster roll in the U.S. and doing some epic whale watching, we're heading up the coast. Today, we're taking you to iconic Old Orchard Beach in Portland and even trying our hand at lobstering. We're Howard and Caitlin Newstate, dog people, food people, adventure people. We've been living on the road for the past four years, traveling through North America and beyond. Each week, we bring you along with us to show you how to live like a local in every new state we visit. Portland, Maine is known for its famous lighthouse, incredible seafood, and a fascinating history. For being the largest, most populated city in Maine, it's not at all overwhelming and actually quite charming. We drove in to spend a day eating, sightseeing, and lobstering our way through the city. First, we met up with Ross, our tour guide from Maine Day Ventures. They offer all kinds of adventures across Maine, from history walking tours to foodie tours. It's a great way to get a taste of the local culture. Welcome to Portland, Maine, guys. Beautiful city by the sea. We're surrounded by water here. Uh, not completely surrounded. We're not on an island. This granite hump that rises up out of the ocean, if you could get up above us, it looks like a goose's neck. The natives actually used to call it Mashagoni, the great neck. It's a funny history tour. I'm not going to show you that much that's so actually that old, and it's because this town has burned to the ground four separate times in its history. This town has picked itself up and cleaned itself off, become this spiffy tourist destination. 67,000 people, 350 restaurants downtown. Uh, that's the most per capita outside of any place that's not San Francisco. It was not always the case. And I want to show you what old smelly Portland, Maine used to look like, because you got to know that. We're going down Customs House Wharf here. They haven't changed that. Harbor Fish Market's almost a symbol of Portland, Maine. It's a, an old style fish market. This is amazing. Look at all this fresh seafood. Do you see the oysters? Oh my god, the oysters. So many different kinds. Wow. We have this amazing working waterfront. We've got to preserve it. So they passed the working waterfront law, and 70% of the use down here has to be marine related. So you've got bankers and lawyers rubbing shoulders with fishermen. Um, this is a real typical scene down here. These are all lobster boats coming in. This beautiful, beautiful building is the old customs house. We call it the old customs house. It's not the old customs house. It's the new customs house. And you're going to get sick of hearing me say this. The old customs house burned down in 1866. All the commerce of this town came in and out of this building, off the ships, off the railroad. This building says you got to do your business in Portland, Maine. This is the vault, two stories, as you can see. These are some of the oldest buildings I can show you. That fire in 1866 would have taken out everything that way, everything this way. Very specific about what it burned. Well, that was an excellent tour. Yeah, you learned so much. So you learned the history, uh, you learned about the people. It's a great well-rounded tour. Yeah, I have a lot of places saved on our map for later now. And Ross is just such a great storyteller. He's hilarious, his energy is excellent. So if you happen to get Ross on one of their tours, you'll be in for a treat. And one of those places I had saved that Ross said was a must visit is the Holy Donut. And holy cow, they are amazing. Made with riced potatoes, they are unlike any donuts we've ever had before. But I can honestly say they are my new favorite. And I'm usually a chocolate lover, but I thought the blueberry and the lemon were out of this world. Add this to your must visit list when you're in Portland. As Ross mentioned, there's no shortage of amazing restaurants here. And another awesome recommendation we got was Bats and River. They have three locations in Maine, including right here in Portland. It's a restaurant, brewery, distillery, and beautiful sensory experience all rolled into one. So we were born on a farm in County Long Ports. And the idea was to just simply grow hops and help contribute to the amazing Maine craft beer culture that we have up here. And then they decided, well, why stop there? Making our own beers turned into let's make our own spirits. And that turned into let's make some amazing restaurants. And it just sort of snowballed and it keeps snowballing. We like to consider ourselves fancy, not formal, but the real thing that sets us apart from everywhere else in Portland is that we have such a warm, inviting, and unique atmosphere. We have our main dining room with our absolutely gorgeous bar that they really outdid themselves with. That's where I call home. I live there about 50 hours a week. Roll on in here, grab a drink at the bar, come upstairs and play some games. In addition to brewing all of our own craft beers, we run a more, I would like to call it a curated bar. We make all of our own base spirits. So all of our craft cocktails are made either using our clock farm vodka, our 
Parian Gin, our Langsford Road Bourbon, our Dixie Bull Rum, or our Motto 33 Agave Spirit. So all of our craft cocktails are also based off of those. And do you have a cocktail that's your favorite to make and or drink? Absolutely. Right now we're running uh, what's called the Tea Time. It's a Dixie Bull Rum based milk punch. And if you've never had a clarified milk punch before, they are a treat. It takes a long time to go from start to finish and it ends up being this bright, light, slightly sweet and very refreshing cocktail that has this depth of character. Oh wow, that was wow. amazing. Talk about like a well-rounded experience. The food is absolutely delicious. I love the variety. The scallop with the asparagus and the mushrooms was delicious. And the lamb meatballs were my favorite. They had like dill and mint with the lamb and the tzatziki sauce. It was all just like an explosion of flavors. It was so well done. And then the strawberry rhubarb bread pudding was so different and so delicious. Like that was incredible. And a great compliment to the cocktails. Come, come to Batson River. <laughs> Two thumbs up from us. All right, we're about to do something that I have been looking forward to for weeks. We have definitely eaten a lot of lobster already, but today we're gonna actually see where the lobster comes from. Yeah, and learn all about the process. And I think we might even pull some lobster out ourselves, and then we're gonna cook it. <laughs> we're going out with Lucky Catch, and I'm so excited to see the process from start to finish. And by finish, I mean when it is down in my belly. So every lobsterman has their own colored buoys. Ours are white with a red top and a green stripe. So at each of our locations, we have six buoys. We grab a different one every time we come out. That allows us to leave the traps down for three days before we come back to get the same one again. It does land on the back. That's a keeper. Woo! All right, there we go. We're on the board. This one's a little deeper. It's 47 feet down here. Part of the reason we chose to go out with Lucky Catch is because not only do you get to learn about lobstering, it's a hands-on experience. We all helped fill the bait bags, check the traps, and reload them. Once you get the bag out, you're gonna tip it right upside down and shake that old stuff out into the water. There's a string right on the bottom you can hang on to. Here's a fresh one. When you wrap the new one in there, just get it as high up as you can. Last thing, we'll close the door and then uh, we'll lock it up. One, two, three, push. Perfect. How was it? <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> I feel like a professional now. Good way. Turn. Up and down. Yep. Perfect. Good job. First time. We learned so much about lobstering in Maine. If you find a female with eggs in one of your traps, you have to mark her tail and throw her back. And then guys, we got another one with eggs here too. Look at all of them on that one. Yeah. Size matters. If a lobster is too small or too big, it goes back. And did you know that lobsters can regrow their front claws? And then again, this one's growing a claw back. It's a little further along than the last one we saw. So because it doesn't have two full claws, we call that a cull. Um, so usually that would get picked. Uh, they'll pick the meat out of the other claw on the tail and that's like gonna be your lobster rolls and things like that. Three, push. There you go, nice work. All right, we got our fresh catch and now we're gonna eat it. Hey. We have two lobsters. <laughs> you can bring it right across to the Port Bloom Lobster Company and they will cook it for you. Oh, you better believe we're gonna do that because I'm starving. Thank you so much. These are our lobsters. This is actually really reasonable. If you keep the lobsters straight off of the boat, it was two for 25, and then it's only 11.99 for them to cook it and all the fixing. Not bad. No visit to Portland is complete without going to see the most photographed lighthouse in the U.S. The famous Portland Headlight is Maine's oldest lighthouse. It was first lit in 1791 and has been protecting Cape Elizabeth and the Portland coastline ever since. Today, the United States Coast Guard maintains the light and the fog signal, but the park is open to the public to come and walk the trails around the lighthouse and learn more about its history. Plus, it's a pretty epic photo op. Just 20 minutes away from Portland, you'll find historic Old Orchard Beach, which we used as our home base during our trip. And it's not often we return to places we've been before, but Paradise Park Resort is still one of our favorite campgrounds since hitting the road in 2018. With over 200 campsites, plus cabins and cottages, there's something for every type of explorer. They even have beautiful waterfront sites with private decks. Wow. 
Check this out. The amenities and views are top notch and they've made going green a big initiative. Incredibly, most of their power is generated from their solar grid and the pool and hot tubs are heated by renewable wood pellets. It's a beautiful and conveniently located spot for exploring the area. Well, we just left the campground on foot and that's because this is the closest campground to downtown Old Orchard Beach. It's within walking distance of all the action. Or if you want to take the shuttle, they do provide a complimentary shuttle that will take you to and from the beach and to the pier. It's so much fun being back here. It holds like a special place in my heart because this is one of our first stops when we hit the road in 2018. We are brand new RVers and it was the first moment for me where I was like, this is our life. This is so cool. We're just like living in this little seaside town for a week and I just loved it and now we're back. I felt like we could go anywhere, we could do anything. Yes, we were still working from the road, <laughs> but the view out our window would be changing almost every single day. Yes. For almost 125 years, Old Orchard Beach and the Pier have been entertaining families from all across America yeah. and Canada. And it really is like a family friendly destination. You've got the arcades and the amusement park, ice cream shops everywhere, restaurants. I mean, just walking out on the pier in and of itself is an experience. And it definitely has an interesting backstory too. <laughs> This pier has seen a lot. When it first opened to the public in July of 1898, the pier was over 1,800 feet long and made of steel, with a massive casino at the very end. But the steel structure was no match for the elements, and just a few months later, a November storm destroyed part of the pier and the casino. It was rebuilt the next year, but in 1907, a massive fire ripped through Old Orchard Beach, destroying businesses and homes. Many people fled hotels that were burning and took refuge out on the pier. They pulled up the wooden planks to keep the fire from fully engulfing it, and the entrance was destroyed by that fire. After being rebuilt, the new ballroom on the pier opened and played host to performances by Louis Armstrong, Frank Sinatra, Cab Calloway, and countless others in front of an audience of up to 5,000 people. Old Orchard Beach hosted dignitaries, presidents, and events like auto races and marathons. It was the place for seaside entertainment in the area. Then tragedy struck again in July of 1969 with another massive fire, this time at the amusement park on the pier. It was one of the busiest nights of the summer and Old Orchard Beach was filled with tourists. Some people who became trapped jumped off into the water as the fire swept further up the pier and into the town. It took over 200 firefighters and more than four hours to control the blaze. Miraculously, no one lost their lives. The remnants of the charred pier were later destroyed by a blizzard. The structure you see today was built in 1980 using wood. It now extends only 500 feet out into the Atlantic Ocean, but it's still an iconic staple of Old Orchard Beach. This is a different kind of lobster roll. This one is called the shack roll. It's a combination of lobster, local crab, butter, and mayo on a brioche bun. Wow, look at the butter. It's gonna be a mess. <laughs> I like the combo. It's good. And I went with haddock fish tacos. Wow. The best part is in about 10 minutes, we'll be back home with the RV. On our next episode, we're taking you to one of our new favorite places in Maine, Dam Riscata, also known as the Napa Valley of Oysters. We'll have you adding this hip river town to your travel bucket list. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week.